2022 BMW F900 XR review, a middleweight with many hats. The BMW F900 XR received its last major update in 2020, and we noted the new model's all-around capability in our first look review. We've spent the last two weeks putting the 2022 model, and our words, to the test dutifully slicing through the traffic on the milk run, the canyons on a Sunday morning, and even putting in some two-up cruising on the back roads. In short, we found that the F900 XR is rather good at everything. Okay, it isn't rip your face off fast, and the 17-inch front wheel does not invite off-road adventuring. Nonetheless, it is a pretty credible contender for just about everything else. Although BMW lumped it in with the adventure models, I suspect categorizing the F900 XR presented a challenge to the Germanic sense of order. It has one foot firmly planted in their tour lineup and a solid toe in the Roadster class, and for that matter, we take it over a scooter for urban mobility every day of the week, but maybe that's just us. BMW first launched the F-Series of parallel twin-powered motorcycles in 2006, opening up a new middleweight market for the Bavarian manufacturer. The F800 GS and GSA developed a loyal following as capable, lower-priced, and lighter alternatives to their big, ARG boxer-powered siblings. Nonetheless, the innovative Rotax engine never quite matched the competition on the street and the F800 ST, and later GT Sport Touring models came and went, leaving only the portly F800 a roadster. In 2020 BMW introduced their newly developed 895 cubic centimeters DOHC, for a valve a per cylinder parallel twin. It had a far more purposeful character stemming from an increased capacity and the 270 degree firing order, introduced in the F850 GS models in 2019. Fitted to the newly minted F900R and XR, they had a more raucous exhaust note and improved performance. The updated twin also benefited from new cylinder heads, forged pistons, a higher 13.1 to 1 compression ratio, and thanks to dual counterbalancers, engine vibration remained negligible. BMW claims the 2022 F900 XR puts out a solid 99 horsepower, with a healthy torque curve, maxing out at 68 lbft at 6750 rpm. A versatile middleweight with character. Much like its larger cousin, the S1000XR we recently reviewed, the F900XR exudes versatility and offers a healthy suite of standard and optional electronics, but delivers them in a more accessible package. The base model has an MSRP of only $11,695. The power band is less apt to punish over-exuberant inputs, and the available saddle configurations take the seat height from an imposing 34.5 inches to just 31. The F900 XR uses a steel bridge frame, making the engine a stressed member of the chassis. A bolt-on subframe helps to bring the maximum payload up to 483 pounds. An aluminum double-sided swing arm and massive 43. Mmm. Non-adjustable fork cradle sporty cast aluminum 17-inch wheels, equipped with Michelin Road 5 GT tires. A 12070 front and 18055 at the rear. The monoshock is fully adjustable. Dual, 320. Mmm. Ventilated floating discs with four pot Brembo radial calipers handle braking at the front, and a single piston caliper combines with a 265. Mmm. Disc at the rear. Control levers are adjustable, as is the windshield, which has two height settings, easily altered with one hand on the fly. What distinguishes the BMW F900XR from its sister model, the F900R? Not a lot on paper. Both models share the same engine, chassis, and equipment. Nonetheless, the R's racier ergonomics, marginally lower stance, and slightly shorter wheelbase promise sportier handling, which combined with its naked styling, definitively place it in the middleweight naked sports class. The upright XR's fairing, windshield, and larger 4.1-gallon fuel tank add long-distance credibility and the additional 17 pounds don't put much of a dent in its sports credentials. Electronics, rider aids, and options. The excellent 6.5-inch color TFT display carries over from the 2020 model, and standard features include two riding modes, road and rain, and BMW's proprietary ASC traction control technology, a welcome addition in wet weather. ABS and BMW's dynamic brake control, 
DBC, and engine brake control EBC also come standard, improving stability when emergencies or poor judgment threaten to unsettle the bike. Emergency braking can lead to pulling hard on the brake lever before fully rolling off the throttle, engaging DBC, which will inhibit throttle inputs helping the brakes do their job. Dumping the throttle, especially mid-corner, can lead to rear wheel slip, and the EBC system regulates throttle response, optimizing grip. A host of optional electronic aids adds to the XR's usability and final price. Our test bike benefits from the premium package option, adding $2,400. The select package, $950, includes ABS Pro and Ride Modes Pro, enabling Dynamic Engine Brake Control and Dynamic Traction Control DTC. In addition, it also includes cruise control, side bag mounts, heated grips, and a factory-installed BMW GPS mount, compatible with the new Navigator 6 system. ABS Pro is BMW's intelligent system and processes data received from an IMU sensor to account for the bike's lean angle when calculating intervention levels, especially useful in wet and slippery conditions. Ride Modes Pro adds Dynamic and Dynamic Pro to the Rider Mode menu. These enable reduced and programmable Dynamic EBC and ASC intervention, allowing the good and the brave to drift and pop wheelies with abandon. The premium package includes all the features of the Select with the addition of Dynamic ESA, a tire pressure monitor, keyless ignition, quick shifter, adaptive headlights, and a center stand. The two standout elements are the adaptive headlights, additional LEDs that employ IMU lean angle data to activate, illuminating the road ahead through the turns, and Dynamic ESA, which actively controls the monoshock, adjusting spring, and damping to suit conditions and road surface. It also works in tandem with the chosen rider mode to reflect riding style and road conditions, and enables the selection of preset options from the handlebar, adjusting preload for luggage and or a passenger. Sport Bike Styling on Stilts At first glance, the F900XR seems a tad lofty for that 17-inch front wheel, and if loud and proud is your MO, its understated styling may not be to your taste, but it won over our affections and is one of BMW Motorrad's more appealing designs. The XR's windshield is reasonably effective, especially in the elevated position, and yet, retains its sporty character. The fairing adds adequate protection without making the bike appear bulky. The high-quality finishing is typically BMW and our test machine came in triple black, a $250 option that makes it look like something a villain might ride in an action movie. BMW also offers optional color-matched hard cases with a combined volume of 63 liters and a 30-liter top case, with remote locking when integrated with keyless ignition. Alternatively, there is a selection of soft luggage and many other accessories to choose from. Riding the F900XR Maybe as a result of stepping off the Ninja 6 we just reviewed, and straight onto the F900XR, but the handlebar feels particularly wide. Overall, the ergonomics are superb. With the broad bar in easy reach, an upright stance, and a comfortable bend at the knee. The body position is ideal for distance or the daily commute. The windshield deflects a reasonable portion of the wind, and the contoured seat offers excellent comfort and support. The growling exhaust note is a far cry from the buzzy F800s, and the improved power is notable under hard acceleration through the lower gears. Although, it does lose some luster in the higher ratios. It is only when you get out on an open winding road that you can fully appreciate the F900XR's most rewarding attribute, its extraordinary agility, which confounds expectations and belies its size and weight. The handling is comparable to the Little Triumph Tiger 660 we tested. The chassis is wonderfully balanced and the suspension assured. The ride feels planted and composed, even when the road is less than perfect. With dynamic rider mode and ESA suspension selected, a firmer setup provides more feedback through the seat and has you heading into turns with increasing conviction. Before long, you'll be trying to outdo your best lean angle on the meter displayed in the sport view. We loved having a lean angle meter but wondered if it might become a safety issue in the wrong hands than ours, for example. The XR does require an aggressive right hand to get the most out of the 895 cubic centimeters twin. The exciting part of the rev range is between 4,500 and 6,500 RPM, but when you're confidently flitting from side to side as you carve your way along your favorite twisty road, it's hard to fault. 
the Michelin Road 5s offer excellent grip. The Brembos provide plenty of progressive stopping power, and thanks to the ABS, EBC, and DTC systems, you get all the exhilarating drama without the crisis. On the highway, a mechanical lever raises the windshield just over 2 inches from its sporty position, making an appreciable difference at higher speeds. The BMW Cruise Control System, common across its touring lineup, has always done a solid job. Just as well, because it will probably be a while before their new adaptive cruise control system, currently only available on the R1250RT, finds its way onto the middleweights. BMW has given some thought to the pillion passengers destined to grace the XR's elevated rear seat. Rear grab handles are standard, and the pillion pegs are mounted on an extended bracket also attaching the rider's pegs, which makes them lower for a comfortable bend at the knee. The adaptive headlights add welcome illumination in the turns at night, providing an extra moment to react to wildlife or some other unseen danger, a feature that should be standard on all bikes fitted with an IMU sensor. After two weeks spent ripping around on the new XR, we would recommend adding the select package. For anyone with serious touring aspirations, but if you can, go all in and add the premium package. The ESA system is worth it. F is for fun. There are some great options in the middleweight adventure slash sport tourer category. Yamaha's Tracer 9 GT has received worthy attention, but the F900 XR compares extremely well, and from a daily use perspective, gives the Tracer a run for its money. The BMW does run out of zing once you've rung the throttle out, but if it is significantly more power you're after, there's an S1000 XR for that. Most of us don't need 165, or more, horses. And the middleweight category is fun because it's approachable and allows more of us to experience a modern motorcycle's full potential. The BMW F900XR is one of those rare bikes that immediately feels familiar and inspires confidence, giving you all the conviction you need to go thrash the heck out of it on the back roads, on the milk run, or a multi-day tour.